Hi, I'm Phil. Welcome to Holy Habitus, and today we're looking at the Sermon on the Mount again. Matthew chapter 5, verse 21 to 22. Jesus teaches about anger. Now, it's worth saying at the outset, there are different types of anger, aren't there? There's such a thing as righteous anger, actually. It's attributed to God himself throughout the pages of the Bible. Slow to anger and abounding in love, it describes. But he does get angry because of his love at injustice and evil and oppression and sin. And Jesus gets righteously angry with the money changers in the temple, saying, you've made a house of prayer into a den of thieves. So righteous anger can be a positive and a constructive thing in our discipleship as we pursue justice in God's earth. But more often than not, anger is unrighteous. It flows not from God's heart, but from our sinful human hearts, our sinful nature. And Jesus is teaching this passage about that kind of anger. He starts with the legal prescription against the extreme manifestation of that anger. You've heard that it was said to the people long ago, do not murder, and that anyone who murders will be subject to judge judgment. But I tell you that anyone who's angry with his brother or sister will be subject to judgment. Again, if anyone says rakar to his brother, he's answerable to the Sanhedrin, the Jewish court of law. But anyone who says you fool will be in danger of the fires of hell. Ooh, that's quite an extreme finish, isn't it? But he's underscoring how important this is. It's not a point of, you know, congratulating ourselves because we've never committed murder, perhaps. But the real problem is anger and that is rooted in the human heart and is common to us all. And Jesus says we need to snuff that out. So we need to get rid of that anger. We need to do something with it. Now, the problem with anger is that by necessity, by nature, it, we, it focuses and fixates on externals. We say, I am angry because of so-and-so or because of that situation. Well, it's actually, Jesus is saying, unrighteous anger, no, the problem isn't out there, it's inside. Now, sometimes anger can flag up for us an inner, unmet, legitimate need. Um, and that's all very well. That can lead us to seek that need and for God to meet that need, in the words of James 4, verses 1 to 2. But actually, often it flags up uh, more significantly a, a, an idolatry or a sinful impulse or self-centeredness in our heart that we need to deal with. And the, the great thing is that that's an opportunity to grow and to take that to God and say, Lord, change me by your Holy Spirit. In the moment of anger, we're often told, aren't we, count to ten, breathe deeply and count to ten. Um, but I, I think uh, Christians have an added advantage because we can advantage because we can count to ten prayerfully. I like to think of it as the oyster, and anger is like the irritant, the grain of sand within the oyster. And if we hold it up to God, then he can coat it by his spirit, and over time creates a hard-worn but precious pearl of great price, a pearl of peace and patience.